This is NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Hercules Tires, right on our strength, and by Grunt Style. Now, with all the news from NASCAR Touring, local and international series racing, here are Kyle Rickey and Hannah Newhouse. The Bonsignor train speeds through Thompson, and Landauer is set to make her NASCAR return. Welcome to NASCAR Coast to Coast for Wednesday, August 15th, 2018. Kyle Ricky here in Killingly, Connecticut. Hannah Newhouse is in Concord, North Carolina. And Hannah, another race weekend in the record books for you, spent at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course on Saturday afternoon covering all the action for the Motor Racing Network. How was your uh, road racing weekend turning right and left? It was really good. I've never been to Mid-Ohio before, so it was cool to get to go there with the MRN group, uh, call the action down on pit road. But let me tell you, as much as I love road racing, that is a difficult pit road. It goes downhill and then to the right. So uh, definitely made an interesting weekend for me, but excited to be back on the show and uh, look forward to some more road racing the next time I'm on pit road in Canada in a few weeks with the trucks. That'd be fun. Uh, Just a couple of weeks away. Hard to believe it's already that time of year. Now, the last couple of weeks, though, you and I have been able to I guess, share our time with the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. You were at the Stafford Motor Speedway two weeks ago. I was at Thompson last Wednesday night. We'll be together tomorrow at the Bristol Motor Speedway for the series' next event uh, that coincides with the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series race. Last week, Hannah, another dominating run by uh, Justin Bonsignor. Uh, If he wasn't the driver to beat before last week, I think he has solidified himself in that role now as we have just a handful of races left. Yeah, we've talked about it all season. Justin Bontenure has been so strong. They have yet to have a slip-up. I mean, even their slip-ups are still pretty decent nights for him. So they've been so strong, so consistent from the get-go. I think at this point in the season, even if he does have a little bit of bad luck, you're going to have to have contenders like Chase Dowling and Timmy Salamito to have just stellar, flawless nights in order to even catch up to Bontenure. I mean, we're going to Bristol, which I think ultimately might actually be kind of an like a field is an evener because not a lot of people maybe have um, as strong runs there. It's something different compared to a lot of the other racetracks that they run, but Justin Bonsignor is good there as well. So uh, it'll be interesting to go into the race tomorrow night and really see um, who comes out on top considering we're so late in the season now. Bonsignor has a 56-point lead over uh, Chase Dowling heading to the Bristol Motor Speedway tomorrow night uh the big story though last wednesday night outside of justin bonsignor was none other than matt swanson a third year driver in the nascar wheel and modified tour who picked up a ride hannah in one of the most coveted teams and one of the most well-known cars and number combination on the tour driving for the bowler racing family filling in for owen pennick and what a run for matt swanson coming home in the second position yeah, Matt Swanson, you know, like you said, he he showed up and drove that legendary number three, that blue car, and everyone was really excited for him. I saw, you know, so, um, posts on social media that were like, this kid deserves it. What a great shot for him. And then to turn up and have the run that he did. I mean, he gave Bonsignor a run for his money. And this kid is a couple years younger, at least, than Bonsignor. And I think it just proves that, hey, he deserves a spot on this tour. He's a contender. And if he were to be maybe in a more consistent ride, Um, he could even maybe contend for a championship here in the next little while. So um, what a great run for him and looking forward to maybe a couple races at the end of the year to watch him and, you know, maybe show back up in that three. I know uh, Rowan's got his hands full with a new kid, so congratulations to that family, Um, welcoming a new child in the family. So, um, but a great opportunity for Swanson. Matt Swanson had been driving and still continues to drive for his family-owned team. He'll join us here in a little bit to talk about his season, a part-time season on the tour this year for uh, for Matt and that run last Wednesday night uh, coming up here in just a few minutes. Also on the show today, Julia Landauer will make her return to the NASCAR series, making her debut this weekend in a NASCAR Pinty's series car after two full years in the NASCAR Kane and Pro Series West. And I know, Hannah, it was a heartbreaker for her that uh, she was unable to get a ride this year in the NASCAR Kane and West series after two pretty good seasons, uh, top 10 seasons in that uh, in that division. Yeah, I talked to Julia Landauer earlier this season in Daytona. We actually all roomed together, myself, her, and Heather DeBeau. And uh, I talked to her and I said, hey, we're at Daytona. You know, what's kind of the plan here? And she goes, honestly, I'm not sure yet. She goes, I've been really, really trying, but she goes, I want to put myself in a good position. If I'm going to make a run for something, I'm going to put myself with a good team, with a chance to win. I can't afford to just go out and be hopping around in teams or, you know, lower budget equipment or, 
you know, not so good races. She goes, I have to put myself in the best position possible at all times right now. So um, that was when I talked to her in Daytona and she hadn't quite figured anything out yet, which is definitely unfortunate because she is on such a great like path. She's such a good advocate for women in the sport. And obviously she's got a great track record and uh, tons of great stats in the Canaan West, as well as her uh, late model championship at Motor Mile Speedway with Lee Pulliam. So Good to see her back behind the wheel of a car, and let alone a Pinty's car. So uh, looking forward to seeing her run this up and coming weekend. She'll be joining us here in a few minutes. Speaking of the NASCAR Pinty Series, they were in action this past weekend at Three Rivers. Alex Tagliani picked up the win, holding off LP Dumoulin at the finish. LP continues to lead the championship standings by 10 points over Mark Antoine Cameron and 11 points over Tagliani heading to Riverside this weekend. So coming up here after the break, a driver that will be in that race at Riverside this weekend, making her return to NASCAR in the Pinty Series. Julia Landauer joins us here in a moment. Front style. The American fighting spirit is in everything we make. We are 500 patriots and veterans strong, bringing clothing manufacturing back to the United States of America. Always moving forward, never retreating, never giving up. We are Grunt Style, and this will defend. Get yours at GruntStyle.com. Are you ready? To help children forget about their serious medical conditions so they can just be a kid. Yeah. Then support Victory Junction, which is the dream of late race driver Adam Petty, who wanted to build a camp where children concentrate on fun and laughter, not illness or disability. At Victory Junction, kids enjoy zip lining, horseback riding, swimming, fishing, all in a medically safe environment, all at no cost to the camper. What do you say, Richard Petty? Let's do this. Learn more at VictoryJunction.org. This is NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Hercules Tires and by Grunt Style. Here are Kyle Rickey and Hannah Newhouse. Back here on NASCAR Coast to Coast, Kyle Ricky, Hannah Newhouse, and joined by NASCAR Pinty's Racing's newest driver. In fact, she'll make her debut this weekend at Riverside International Raceway. Julia Landauer joins us on the guest line. Julia, welcome back to NASCAR Coast to Coast. The last couple of times you've joined us, it's been as a NASCAR can and West driver, and now you're set to make your debut in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Congratulations on the opportunity, and welcome back to the show. Yes, thank you for having me. It's super exciting, isn't it? You know, this uh, season was definitely a little nerve-wracking, not knowing what I was doing at the beginning, but um, really excited to get back on track. Now, you'll make your return this weekend to the NASCAR Pinty Series, driving for Joey McComb for his CBRT racing team. Talk a little bit about how this deal came together and, and how excited you are to get back at it this weekend. Definitely. So Joey and I met actually when we were both um, attending the Green Sports Alliance Summit with NASCAR um, back in June of last year. Uh, it was right after the Sonoma race. And we kept in touch, and I think we have, you know, similar mindsets. We work really well together, and we've, um, you know, we wanted to figure out if there was a way that we could work together on track. And so we were able to pull something together for, you know, the tail end of the season. And, um, yeah, it's, just, it's really cool because the car is very different than a K&N West car, and we were able to test uh, briefly last week. And so just it'll be – I'll have my plate full for sure getting uh, getting used to a new car, uh, much longer races than we raced on the West Coast, and um, with a whole bunch of veteran drivers who uh, I've been watching old races, and they're aggressive. Um, there's a lot going on up there. Like you had mentioned, we did try to get you on the show last week, but you were out testing. Um, how do you feel that test went, and how do these cars compare to the Canaan West cars that you're coming from? It was a really good test, and one, uh, it was at Jucasa Speedway, which is a little bit south of Toronto, and the track is beautiful. I mean, it's freshly paved. It's, um, I think, about 0.6 miles. Um, they have a race there later this season, but it was really cool to just get a feel for it. You know, there are are less brakes on this on the Pinty's car than there are on the K and N cars, um, and you know the shocks are a little different. So it really it was a totally different feeling car. You can't just slam on the brakes, turn the car, and go. So I think um, I think there's a lot you know a lot to put on the driver to um, maneuver it around a track. And um, but I'm I'm really looking forward. I'm looking forward to getting on 
I guess they call Riverside kind of like a mini Bristol. It's pretty high banked, and it's only a third of a mile, so it should be a really, really exciting race. Uh, might be jumping in the deep end a little bit, but um, that's what I'm here for. So looking forward to it. It's currently a three-race deal. You mentioned Riverside this weekend, uh, another short track in a couple of weeks at St. Eustache. And then there's the road course in there at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park in just over a week from now. You're coming from the world of karting or have come from the world of karting as a kid. Uh, and we see those karting kids have so much success when they get into full-bodied stock cars on road courses. How would you kind of rate your road racing skills after a, a couple of events in the NASCAR Cana West Series the last couple of years? Yeah, so it's, it's super different, and I have a lot of road course experience in formula cars also, so, you know, lower center of gravity, a lot of grip, um, and, you know, I would have liked Sonoma to have gone a little bit better my past two years. We've had incidents at that track, but when we got on um, Utah uh, Motorsports Park, uh, we did really well, and it was really cool to um, just, you know, manhandle that car around a track, and so I'm excited. You know, the last time I was on Canadian Tire was in 2006 seven when I was in a formula BMW so lots of tire not a lot of power and it was in the rain so I think uh, no matter what my experience uh, next weekend is going to be a little different but I'm I'm looking forward to it I think it will be challenging um, you know with pit stops and, and strategy there so um, we'll see but I'm I really like being on the road courses I'm really excited to get back to that track especially now that they've extended I think it's turn two they've added some pavement since I was last there and uh It'll be fun to kind of reconnect with my fans and friends that I have up there. Now, it's a new series, a new team, and a new car for you, as well as a couple new tracks. But you're bringing a familiar face with you to these races. Your crew chief from the K&N West Series over at Bill McAnally Racing, Eric Holmes. How did you talk Eric Holmes into coming Pinty's Racing with you? And does that, you know, boost your confidence or make you feel a little bit more comfortable knowing you've got him on your side? Yeah, so Eric's going to be the spotter for me, which I'm really excited about, and um, obviously we've kept in touch since we worked together, and we just, we worked really well together, and I think, I think when you're going to a new team, to be able to have some familiar face with you is really important, and I think it helps the kind of transition to getting used to working with other people, and there's a certain level of trust there, and um, so I think that's really, that's really great, and um, you know the little bit I've worked with Joey so far. I think we're all going to have a really good working relationship, and um, you know I think it just keeps the comfort level there. And I don't, I don't really feel like I'm have to worry about okay, am I meshing with the team really well? I think it's pretty clear that we're all really excited to work together. So that's very refreshing. I, I wouldn't say that's always the case uh, for racers joining a new team. So it's it's kind of a luxury this year. You mentioned running the NASCAR K and N car on road courses the last couple of seasons a moment ago. Two full seasons in that series, eight top fives, 20 top tens in 28 starts. Uh, if I were a car owner, I would say sign her up. I mean, fourth and seventh in points. Um, what do you think happened or, or why aren't you in that series this season with those stellar stats? Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, 27 was a little bit rough. We just, you know, never – really found the rhythm um but i think with 2016 it was I, I was really proud of how we did and i think partially just out of the driver trajectory i think if you can spend two years in the development series that's really good um i felt like i was ready to get on some bigger tracks and um you know but you know funding is really tough with with racing and that's kind of the name of the game and so we've just been working really hard off the track to kind of secure and attract that kind of uh, corporate partnership and I've also talked with with teams and it's just it's a it's a tough time and I think there are so many talented racers out there and so we're you know doing the best that we can and I'm hoping that I can jump into the Pinty series and work my butt off and show some really great results because at the end of the day it's been a little too long since I've been in victory lane and I would really like to get back so I'm um, just you know doing a lot of prep work and trying to do my best. And you've got the three-race deal here for the Pinty Series, uh, the continuation of the 2018 season. Do you have any more plans maybe in the works for 2018 or maybe even 2019? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Joey and I are talking about this. We'd love to be able to run out the rest of the season. And so we're going to see what we can pull together to try to make that happen for the last two races. And, um, you know, always looking ahead. But I think right now the focus has been on trying to get in the seat for 2018. And, um you know, I just want to keep keep being able to get in competitive equipment and to show what I can do and 
to keep trying to move closer and closer to running in the three national series in NASCAR. So, um, yeah, we'll see. We will see. Everything is constantly in flux, so um, we will see what happens. Julia Landau, we're joining us here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Julia, thanks for coming back on the show. Uh, congratulations on the opportunity. Oh. Best of luck this weekend, and can't wait to see you uh, in person when Hannah and I get up to Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. Oh, I'm so excited to see you guys. Yay, that's going to be awesome. Um, and thank you so much for having me on the show. It's great to, uh, great to be making a return. Best of luck to you this weekend at Riverside. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. Julia Landauer joining us here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Coming up, NASCAR wheel and modified tour driver Matt Swanson recaps his very eventful day last Wednesday at the Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park. Citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. MRN Original Programs, stream on MRN.com. Check out NASCAR drivers on Motorsports Monday with Woody Kane and Joey Wing Meyer. Sprint Car Racing on Wing Nation with Steve Post and Aaron Everman. Meet NASCAR team crews on Crew Call with Sammy Joe and Rocco. NASCAR Local and Regional Racing on NASCAR Coast to Coast with Kyle Rickey and Hannah Newhouse. NHRA Talk on The Straight Line with Marty Huff and Doug Herbert. Your home for original motorsports talk. MRN.com. This is NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Hercules Tires and by Grunt Style. Here are Kyle Rickey and Hannah Newhouse. The NASCAR Wheel and Modify Tour was in action last weekend at the Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park in Connecticut, and it was 18-year-old Matt Swanson that kind of stole the show with a second-place effort, finishing second to, of course, Justin Bonsignor. Matt joins us now on the guest line. Matt, congratulations on the second-place run, and uh, I guess the bigger story is what your day and what your week was like leading into that event, having the opportunity to drive for one of the most coveted teams in NASCAR wheel and modified racing in, in that number three bowler ra racing entry. Uh, kind of walk us through what your day was like and how that ride an opportunity came about. Yeah, it kind of started the night before the race. Um, I was down at Spafco race cars, getting our family car ready to go to the race at Thompson on uh, Wednesday there. And uh, my father actually uh, was calling me while I was loading the car, and um, he said the three guys called, and uh, Rowan was going to be away at home uh, with the family while the baby was born, and they asked if I wanted to fill in. And um, I was really blessed for the opportunity to be able to drive the three car, and it, it was a really cool opportunity. Um, I had never driven for anyone else on the Wheel and Modified Tour, and um, the, our sponsors and partners at there were on board with us and uh, everyone was just telling me to go for it and take that great opportunity and make the best of it and um, we we didn't get the win but um, we de I think we definitely made the best um, of that that situation um, proved that I could run up front and just really thankful that the whole three team uh, trusted me and picked me to drive their race car and try and get the job done with it but unfortunately we came up one spot short. Now, although Rowan does have that new child, I'm sure he's itching to get back behind the wheel, but are there any more talks maybe in the future of you getting back behind the wheel of that three car? Nothing yet. Um, hopefully it, it sparks new opportunities. My goal right now, and along with my sponsors at Starrett Partners and all them, uh, we really want to get back on the tour full time, whether it's with another team, whether I get a ride, or if it's with our family-owned car, we're just trying to Put all the pieces together to get back full time on the tour so hopefully uh proving that we can run up front like that um will open up some more doors and opportunities to be able to fulfill that dream of coming back full time earlier in the show we talked about your family team and and that you have been running that family number 89 car the last uh, two seasons full time on the nascar wheel and modified tour how much were you able to learn in driving somebody else's equipment 
Uh, obviously, the number three car, the bowler entry, very well established with the tour. It's been on the series since the 1960s. Um, what were you able to take away from that experience that you might be able to bring to your family operation? Um, there were obviously some little things that I, I noticed um, just driving the three car. Um, like I said, it was the only other um, car I've ever driven on the wheel modified tour besides my family owned car. So um, I definitely picked up on some different things that they try, try and what they do with their cars. But when it comes down to it, um, the chassis are different. So uh, we're going to just keep, we're kind of taking this year as, and turn it into a rebuild year for our family owned team and um, putting all the pieces together to make sure when we, if we do come back full time, we're we're doing it 150% and we're up front contending uh, like we did with that three car. So um, just little things that as a driver and um, just walking around the car and at the shop and all the things they do on that car, I picked up on a little th couple little things. But other than that, our family car has been really good this year, so we're just going to keep plugging away and trying to be contending with it. Now, you're not full-time on the tour at the moment, but um, you are consistently the youngest competitor when you do go to the races for the most part. And you're competing against guys like Andy Sice and Doug Kobe and Rowan Pennick, who have tons and tons of experience at a lot of these tracks and are quite a bit older than you. Do you um, see them as maybe intimidating, or do you, um, pretty much, do you get the chance to pick their brain? At first, I kind of thought of it, like you said, as like a little intimidation um, because, I, I, like you said, I was racing against guys that have been running the tour for many, many years. And, um, just the, the track time and seat time that all those guys have, um, it, they really know what they're doing when they go to the racetrack every week. And um, when it comes down to it now, uh, I, I can kind of pick their brains and um, see what they think and they're really open to, uh, um, if I ask them questions, if um, I have questions about or anything, they're, they're really open about helping me. And um, especially with us being a family team, uh, we kind of ask around the pit area for help sometimes. But um, everyone that we race with on the tour is always helping, always open to help us with open arms and um, make sure we can uh, contend like we do. Eighth and ninth in the final standings the last two years. You mentioned part-time season this year. How difficult was it for you guys to make that decision at the beginning of the season to, to cut back and only run a part-time schedule? And, and what's the rest of the season look like for you as the Modifieds get set to take the track this Thursday at Bristol? Will, uh, will you be there? Yeah, I'll be down there. I'll be down there helping uh, my buddy Chase Dowling with his, uh, his 15 car and um... – like you said, it, at first when we decided to do the part-time deal, it was definitely a, it was hard to take on just because I had been running full-time the last two years. Um, but once it came down to it and I realized what it was for and we were using it as a rebuild year to make sure we could go to the racetrack at 150% with our car every time we went, um, I, it became a little bit more understanding and um Fortunately enough, our partners at Stair were 100% uh, on board with us when we decided to take the step back and do part time. And um, so far this year, we besides we lost the motor at Stafford and we we got caught up in someone's mess at Seaconk. We haven't finished outside the top 10. So um, as of now, our track record's pretty good running part time this year. And like I said, hopefully it opens up some more doors and we can come back full time shortly. Now, you have been, like you said, recruited this weekend to be a crew guy, um, but you also come from a family-owned team, which definitely sets a different um, a different situation for you that you have to work on your own cars, and now you're helping work on other people's. As a young driver who's trying to make it, um, how important is it to know how to work on these cars? Um, it's really important just because as a driver you can um, bring that much more knowledge uh, when it comes to getting the car right for the race and Ever since I started racing, I've had to work on my cars and um, be in the shop with my father every night and my whole family, and we've been racing for so long. I've been at it for quite a while now, even though I'm only 18. So um, it helps a lot, I think, just as a driver, being able to give that much more feedback as a driver and get the car right when it comes race time. Matt Swanson joining us here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. We had Doug Kobe on the show 
last week, obviously a multi-time champion of the series. And, and he talked about how difficult this stretch of the season is for even his team uh, with three consecutive midweek shows. You've been through this now the last couple of years uh, with your family-owned team, a Friday night race at Stafford, a, a what was a Wednesday night race at Bristol. Now it's Thursday. You have the Wednesday night race at Thompson mixed in there. How difficult is it for a smaller family-run team such as yourself to have so many races back-to-back-to-back, to back to back, but also jammed in the middle of the week where you know maybe you have some crew guys that have to take some time off from work? Oh, it's definitely tough. I think this part of the season is what really separates the men from the boys and really proves um, proves what everyone's teams are made of. But um, this is the this is the part of the season where um, you kind of start planning for these upcoming weeks before the race season even starts. Um, you kind of sit down and you uh, get your maintenance program for your car set settled and make sure you know what you have to do that week. Uh, knock on wood that you don't get wrecked one of those weeks because that's what that's when it really gets tough. But um, it, it, as a family team, what we've normally done years past is we'll sit down in the middle of the winter and we'll get our maintenance program, what we have to do on the car, all settled and um, know what we have to do every week we race just so when it comes down to it, if something else does change, um, you're not thrashing to get back to the racetrack. But these these weeks for the wheel and modified tour are definitely the toughest weeks throughout the whole year. A lot of races coming up all back to back uh, and continuing their schedule this Thursday at the Bristol Motor Speedway. Matt, thanks for taking the opportunity to join us here on NASCAR Coast to Coast and congratulations on on not only getting the opportunity last Wednesday to fill in for Rowan, but obviously you made just about the best of it with a second place finish. It was fun to watch. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on, and hopefully I'll see you guys down at Bristol. We'll see you down there uh, later this week. Matt Swanson joining us here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Of course, the Modifieds will lead in, uh, be the, the, the kickoff to a big doubleheader weekend of racing at the Bristol Motor Speedway, the UNOH 200, of course, to the Camping World Truck Series Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Hannah, can't wait to get to Thunder Valley. It's going to be fun. Bristol night race is one of my favorite weeks of the season, especially uh, those modifieds. I got to see them for the first time on the high banks of Bristol, and I was already a huge Bristol fan. But that's something just so like raw and cool about those modifieds, especially on the high banks of Bristol. So pair those up with the trucks, my other favorite thing, and it's going to be a good week. One of the best days of short track racing all season. Coming up, we'll preview the weekend ahead and review a busy weekend that was in NASCAR short track racing when we continue with NASCAR Coast to Coast. Grunt style. The American fighting spirit is in everything we make. We are 500 patriots and veterans strong, bringing clothing manufacturing back to the United States of America. Always moving forward, never retreating, never giving up. We are Grunt style, and this we'll defend. Get yours at gruntstyle.com. Hi, this is Mike Bagley. Join me and the rest of the MRN crew every Tuesday night for NASCAR Live. We'll put a bow on the weekend's action and get you ready for the upcoming race with the biggest names in the sport. As you look at that particular race, that's been one of our best races over the years, and I think every driver in the garage is looking forward to racing this particular package. Hear exclusive interviews, expert analysis, as well as stuff you won't hear anywhere else. Oh, yeah, good job, guys. Good job. It's NASCAR Live this Tuesday night at 7 Eastern on the Motor Racing Network. This is NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Hercules Tires and by Grunt Style. Here are Kyle Rickey and Hannah Newhouse. Wrapping up another edition of NASCAR Coast to Coast here on the Motor Racing Network. Want to wish congratulations to Tim Brown. Uh, for the first time in 70 years of racing at Bowman Gray Stadium, he's the first driver to win back-to-back 50 lap features in a single night. Hannah, I, I find that hard to believe. Uh, of 70 years of racing there that no driver has won twin 50s in a single night, but he was able to do that this past Saturday. Yeah, that's actually really funny you say that. You you very, you hear that a lot when drivers go back-to-back and wins at short tracks and double headers, but to not ever have that accomplished at Bowman Gray until the up and coming weekend, it tells you the level of competition there is just something else. So congratulations to him, and I tell everyone this always, if you have never been out to Bowman Gray, it's a lifetime experience. you got to make it out there. 
Well, you got one more shot this year. Championship night this Saturday night. Burt Myers is the championship leader looking for another championship at the stadium. Uh, no change atop the NASCAR Wheel and All-American Series national standings. Philip Morris continues to have a 98-point lead over Burt Myers heading into the final month of the season. Ronnie Williams, Jason Myers, and Keith Rocco round out the top five. And Hannah, busy weekend for the NASCAR k and Pro Series West. Derek Thorne picking up the race win this past weekend at Evergreen. Sounded like a really interesting race as well. Uh, actually, it was a battle of the Derek. Derek Thorne picked up that win, but if you, if you asked him, he said, this wasn't my race to win. We had a top three car, but uh, Derek Krauss, a dominant day all day, led most of the race and then ran out of gas. So uh, what an unfortunate way to lose a race. But Sunrise Ford guys back on top with another win as they head to Gateway in a few weeks for another Kane and East and West combination race. Cole Rouse finishing in the second spot. Thorne is the point leader by 18 over Ryan Partridge. Five to go, Hannah, and there's some wild card racers coming up at Gateway and the Dirt Track at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, so that'll make it interesting. Yeah, Dirt Track is definitely one of my uh, checklists that I'm so excited to go to. Kane and West cars on dirt. That is going to be so exciting. Can't wait. It's coming up. It's going to be a very exciting second half of the season for the NASCAR Kane and Pro Series West. But first, we have Bristol coming up. Look forward to seeing you there in just a couple of days, Hannah. I will see you there. Looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. Look forward to doing it next week. Want to thank Julio Landauer and Matt Swanson for joining us on the show today. For producers Craig Moore and, and uh, Brian Yesowich. She's Hannah Newhouse. I'm Kyle Ricky. We'll see you back here next week. NASCAR Coast to Coast has been brought to you by Hercules Tires and by Grunt Style. NASCAR Coast to Coast can be found on demand at MRN.com, iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, and SoundCloud. NASCAR Coast to Coast is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.